and welcome to ADHD Friendly, the podcast where everything that I bring and share with you is focused on closing that gap between struggling and thriving with ADHD. So we're tilting that playing field and are thriving. I'm Patty Blindman. I am an ADHD coach and so excited to be here for Becca. It's episode 117. I didn't trust myself to remember. Oh my goodness. 117. So here we are. This is one of my favorite topics and I'll probably do another episode um, in the not too distant future because I just feel like I can't do, it's such a big topic that I'm going to talk about yeah. today. I don't feel like I can kind of share everything I want to share and keep this a uh, reasonably time. <laughs> so um, anyway, welcome. If you haven't already, I invite you to check out my website, ADHDfriendly.com, where I have lots of additional resources to support those of us who have ADHD brain wiring. And I also have information on there about my membership community that I invite you to check out where I have a price lock. Once you join, you are locked into the price that the membership is offered when you join, as long as you don't cancel, um, you're locked in, which woo, woo. always feels very ADHD yes. friendly to me. So if you're looking for more resources, I invite you to check it out. All right. Episode 117. As always, I'm going to start with celebration. And then again, this week, Becca, my ADHD friendly tool for this week and my topic tied together. Woo-hoo. So I'm going to check them off in one go. And then of course I have my quote to share with you and let's just ju- jump in and get to it. I'm going to start with my celebration. This is a, <laughs> a completely separate celebration from anything to do with the topic I'm talking about today, but I saw it in an article recently and I was just like, yes. So <laughs> I, I don't mean this in any way against any products out there. Um, so I'm going to be sharing the name of the product that the article is about. So the, the reason it caught my eye, this is from the wall street journal and the article is titled supermarket giant drops. Pepsi and Lay's over price increases. <laughs> I, I just have to say, I don't believe I'm alone in the price fatigue. Not at all. Every time I go to the store, I'm like, what? And I'm not, I, I don't know what products um, Lay's makes. I don't buy soda. I'm not a soda drinker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do occasionally buy chips and tortilla yeah. chips and that kind of thing. So I'm not exactly sure outside of like regular Lay's potato chips, what products are there. So I'm not talking about this in terms of Lay's specifically, just in general. Yeah. If you've purchased chips recently, it's like, you know, a little like taken out alone to get yeah. you a, a bag of chips. Like, I'm just like, what? Just a snack. What? I know. Like insane mm-hmm. amount of money where I'm just like, it almost feels like I, I got burned. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, is that for, no, never mind. We don't no. need that. We don't need that. <laughs> so This just, when I read it, I was like, I had the same reaction as I did when I saw the first article starting to come out about tip fatigue, Yes, where I was like, oh, it's not just me. Cause I I don't believe it could just be me, but yet I see everybody just moving along and everything just seems to keep going up. And I'm like, what, at what point do we just as consumers say enough? Enough is enough. And so I thought, oh my gosh. So this is not happening here in America. I have to just share, (laughs) um, and honestly, I didn't highlight it because I was so excited. I grabbed it. I read it last night and I didn't, I didn't highlight. I want to say it's in France. Um, but they just said no. To yeah. Them. I'm sorry. Here it is. Uh, France, Italy, Spain, and Belgium Ooh. have pulled their products because of How the inflation. And then they reference in the article, the, you know, product shrinkage and the price staying the same, as well as the price going up where you're paying more for less. And I know that there was a reason for this during the pandemic. Yeah. But apparently, you know, it's pretty clear that a lot of larger companies that are, you know, producing a lot of the things that we consume have shared that, you know, like they've not gotten a lot of pushback. So Mm -hmm. a lot of these prices are not only here to stay, it looks like, but are going to continue going up. And so what I, what I got from this is just what I'm sharing. I'm starting my own little, like, like, like (laughs) movement here, but I'm like, I don't think the prices will keep going up if, if we, you know, kind of like vote with our wallets yeah. and stop. Um, Cause I, I think I, I told you earlier this week, I went with my daughter, got three little um, medium, Plus, actually two medium ice creams yes. and one small ice cream from like a, like a frozen um, custard kind of, you know, place. And I'm not going to name the place, but I am not kidding you. When I tell you it was $25 and change for three 
and medium was like, like, if you're listening to this, check out my YouTube They're channel, ADHD it. friendly. It, I was literally, I thought it, I thought, I think there was a mistake, but I was in the drive-thru and I don't do well. I'm not very flexible cognitively, but I've gotten right. quite overwhelmed, but I was like, did they just 25, like 82 or something? I was like, that can't be. I ordered three things, right? Three, three little flex creams. So I didn't order any, any meals Meals, with it, just no drinks, just, just three little ice creams. So I was like, then I'm done. I'm done. And it was funny because that night is when I saw this article and I was like, okay, let me just share my celebration that this is being, there's something being done somewhere Yeah. to kind of be like, no, we're not going to keep carrying your products because let's be honest, there's a lot of choices out there. So So maybe we vote with our wallets and buy the store brand or yeah, something that, that lets the companies get a little bit more of a message because if we keep buying them, they're going to keep going up. And, and at one point it will get to a point and I don't know it for me, it's gotten there, but, but if it hasn't gotten there for you, I invite (laughs) you to explore. Is there, you know, something that we can do collectively with our wallets to kind of say, all right, enough people. Like I understand. I want everybody to get a fair wage. I want all of it. But if it's just for the sake of more profits, yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm, no, no, no. So <laughs> thumbs down to, to just raising prices for the sake of raising prices yes. and yes. thumbs up to voting with your wallet and taking charge of how much, you know, kind of like letting it be known how much you're you're okay with yeah the price is going up so I just wanted to share that as a celebration because I just it felt really good to know I'm not alone because sometimes it does I get yeah. to keep seeing all these things like I'm just going out to eat what am I doing but I'm like I, I just I can't so no. so anyway there's my celebration all right hello friends I'm ADHD friendly girl are you overwhelmed unmotivated run down do you stop before you start The answer to your challenges can be found at ADHD Friendly. ADHD Friendly is where we we make the doing easier. Join ADHD Friendly today and start tilting the playing field in favor of your ADHD brain and start thriving. ADHDfriendly.com, where intention meets action. Totally shifting now into my topic for today. My topic is, let me read because I love the way I worded this, um, three musts for ADHD friendly storage and organizational tools. So full disclosure, if I remember correctly, and I think I do, I got these three foundational principles and organization from my time when I was designing closets for the container store. Yes. And I'm pretty like, I, I, I'm, I don't know if they still use these terms. I haven't been there in like, I don't know, like almost 15 years now. Um, but I remember it was like, literally, like I always talk about, I love when people put things into just a couple of bullet points, a few words that captures a whole idea. And that's what they did. So the words are visible, accessible, and flexible. Right. So if you keep that in mind, when you're organizing anything physically, or, you know, you're trying to set up a a way to keep up with things more easily storing them. I want you to keep that in mind. Is it visible? Is it accessible? And is it flexible? And I'm going to share some examples of what I mean, some concrete visible things. I'm going to start with some pictures I printed because a couple of the things are just not practical for me to like haul over here and show you. So one of them, and I have two of these right behind where Becca's sitting right now is, so again, full disclosure, I do not work for the container store. I'm not getting reimbursed by the container store. (laughs) I have no doubt that there's knockoff products that would be less expensive than the container store because like like the reality is the products I'm going to share are not inexpensive, Mm -hmm. Um, but they do work really well. And I mean, I have three of the carts I'm going to reference right now, right here in in eyesight. So they're the Alpha E-L- FA carts and storage and organization system. And so this is the alpha file cart. So again, if you're listening to this, if you want to check out any of the images I'm sharing, ADHD friendly is the podcast um, channel on YouTube. So this is the hanging cart. I looked for one with colored files because I thought it would show up my oh, you know, yeah. little contrast. Um, and they used to have that, but they don't right now on their site. So um, the top little section is just runners to hang your hanging folders. And then there's two drawers beneath. This is what it comes with standard. And you can, Becca, like, if you look, mine are not white. I have the platinum yeah. um, versions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're, they're visible. 
right? So I always say like, like if you think about a traditional, um, there's a win, I caught my, my fingers <laughs> from falling. A traditional file cabinet. Yes. You have to push the little button, open the drawer, you close it, it's out of sight, out of yeah, mind. You, don't know what's in there. you have to literally try to recall before you open. And I know I had a, a four or five, however many drawers, you know, in the big ones. Yes. I never wanted to open that thing mm -hmm. because I was like, which one is it? Is it in the top? Is it in the bottom? Uh, like, and then like, you know, digging through the in the whole thing. Yes. So it was just really frustrating. So you can see everything. Yeah. Right. So, so it's clear. Check in the box, visible. It is accessible because I don't have to do the step of opening the drawer. It's always open. It's an open top file cart. You can always see it. You can see it and you can get to it. Easily. This is really important because as simple as somebody might say, oh, you just open the drawer. If you have resistance to open that drawer, it's going to get in the way and you're going to have a million files on top. Yeah. Right. And so you're accessible not is, open it's it. right there, right there. Mm -hmm. um, and then flexible. So this is flexible. Number one, it has casters. You can wheel the little guy wherever you want. So I love that I can pull mine over to a chair where I'm comfortable if I'm going to be doing some kind of purging and going through, yeah. or if I've got like a little stack of files that I need to now file, it's really nice that I can pull it close to me and do it with ease. Um, you can also kind of move around where you're going to put your, you can put the the deeper drawer, the runners will accommodate, you know, when you're moving it. So you can do like the little drawer in the bottom. You can trade out this larger, deeper one and get two more smaller ones. So you've got three small shallow drawers. It's very flexible and it's designed. So I personally am a huge fan of the alpha system, but I know that there are cheaper alternatives that like, you know, like Home Depot, yeah, Lowe's, that kind of thing. So um, just sharing this as a filing option. It's pretty. It just oh, it's really pretty. really pretty. The next thing is also alpha that this is all I'm going to share on alpha. Again, I don't work <laughs> for them. I'm not benefiting anyway financially, but it's their closet system. Uh -huh. So it's basically taking that same idea and taking it into a closet. So this is one of the lesser expensive um, closet design options because it has these visible see-through kind of mesh drawers. Yeah. It has the open shelving. All of this is flexible because you can move it all around. You can move the drawers to the bottom. You can move the shelf up. Everything can be changed around. It's my favorite stinking thing. Oh, it's if so you start boring. using it, you're like, oh my gosh, I wish we'd done the shelves on the, on the other side and put the hanging over here. You just move it. Like it's so, I have this in every closet because I work there. So I, love I, I design all of my closets. And when we moved, because this is the store I worked at when I lived in North Carolina and Raleigh, when we moved, I brought the bulk of it. Like I took them out of the closets before I even listed the house because you can't take things out once you put it oh, on the market. Yeah. So I decided, oh, what do you want to keep? So it's still an alpha closet, but what am I bringing with me? Yeah. And I put them into the closets in this house that needed the storage mm -hmm. and organization yeah. system. So it's just one of my favorite go-tos. And I mean, because it's so flexible, I'm always like, literally like, oh, I don't really use that in there anymore. I'm going to take that apart and put it in this room right. and use it here. So I'm always reconfiguring how it's used because it's visible, it's accessible, and it's flexible. Because um, again, you can get into it and, and there's little drawer labels that you can get. And I highly recommend labeling oh. everything that you do. Because I always say, if there's a label here that says socks, you're a lot less likely to throw shirts and yeah. um, you know, other things in there. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it says socks on it. So I was like, because oh, then again, it's visible what you intend to go in there. Um, I no longer have dressers in my room. I just have, because you don't need to, because honestly, once it started, I was like, why am I coming here for the things in my closet and going back out to my room to get other. So it just cleared up. It opened up all this space in my room because it just held everything. Cause it's so easy to maximize the space. Totally. So there's my little pitch for alpha. You're welcome containers. <laughs> um, all right. So those are the, the two kind of like really flexible storage things for closets. Um, could also go for pantries, you know, the same thing. All of those systems are able to be used in any space or even an open wall. If you just want to kind of have like a little two foot or four foot section that you just, you're like, you know what, I can use that wall better. Smart. If I, if I go up with my storage, the other things that I wanted to share when we think about keeping things in sight, in mind, my ism, my <laughs> S I am keeping it in sight in mind. It's my mantra because if it's not in my sight, it is not in my mind. I absolutely forget it exists. So here's a good example of, it has an open top. It has a happy little sign here, storage. Yay, lovely. <laughs> I put, this is my original yarn story. Oh. I had a few of these and I would just, you know, tuck my yarn. I put it on a shelf and it looked very pretty. 
And this is where I always want to kind of highlight if you feel resistance, no matter how small it is, acknowledge the resistance because yeah. it will get in your way of using it. That's that whole, if it's not accessible, if you have to lift something off of it, if you have to take off the lid, like if you think of a hamper, I always like work with my clients if they're having a hard time getting things into the hamper. Oh, I'm like, does the hamper have a lid? Let's not I judge. Should. Like, it should be ridiculous. I should just be able to take the lid off. If you're not taking the lid off and things aren't getting in there, think about where it is or think about what's making it hard to get the yeah. things in there and put it where you're going to use it and take the lid off if that's creating any resistance. I liked the way this looked. It fit on my shelves. It was great. All the yarn fit in there nicely. Yeah. So it looked organized, but I couldn't see what was in there without taking it because the way that it fit on the shelf, I couldn't see into it. I had to move it off the shelf to look inside. I was constantly buying things I already had. I couldn't remember what I had. I didn't want to go look yeah. because I would have to lift it off. And as simple as that sounds, I wasn't doing it. So what I know about myself is if it's not visible, accessible, and flexible, You're not gonna I'm not going to do it. So I do still use this bin kind of, I keep it on the side of the chair that I knit in so I can just, I can look down and see into it. Yeah, you can so that works, way. but to store my yarn mm -hmm. and it's still a work in progress. I'm still playing around with it, but I moved to these glass jars because they look so pretty. Really I just do. feel like my yarn looks like a little work of art. Yeah. So I have, I don't know, a dozen or so different, you know, sizes of these jars with the little label that it tells me what kind of yarn is in here. Cause I'm still a newer knitter. I don't remember what the yarn would go for Different if I don't. Sizes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have these pretty little jars that remind me what I have because I can see through it and I can, it's pre. Yeah. It's flexible. I can, you know, decide I have had to move sometimes. Where I'm like, I started with a, yard, a smaller jar and I'm like, oh, I need something much larger Bigger, yeah. for this project or whatever. So I can just change the label up and put it into a different jar. So, and I like the way they look. It's not perfect but it's much better than what I had. Yeah. And I do enjoy looking at them. I do feel like they're pretty. It does look very pretty. So that's my, my glass jar visible um, organization little hack. And <clears throat> excuse me. Then I have back in those, like I'm always with these, like, how do I keep things visible mm -hmm. on my desk without yes. stacking? If it turns into a stack, I only see what's on the very top of the stack, of course, because I've covered up what's below it. And yeah. my mind does not remember what's below it. It's gone. So I love this little guy. And I just have to look at the little thing that I have taped to it to remember <laughs> what it's called, because it doesn't have like an intuitive name. So it's called the Durable Wall Support Mural. Oh. So this actually comes with um, the hardware where you can attach it to the wall. These are found a lot I, when I was a teacher. This is what I had on my desk. And so I remember like, that was what I was looking for when I was trying to figure out how am I going to keep these things on my desk Without visible so that I can see, yeah. And, and really for my reference things, right? Cause when I was a teacher, it was like the emergency evacuation thing. Sure. It was, you know, just like certain things were kept yeah. in there. Um, but I have those kind of go-to things that I look for for my business. And so for example, I have my little my treat yourself menu on one side. I have my ICNAP menu on the other. There's other episodes that you can check out the podcast mm -hmm. for more about those tools that I use, but it just lets me label and flip if I need a quick reference. It is a little bulky. I'm not going to lie. It does take up some space when you start kind of opening things up on your desk, yeah. but it really allows my most needed resources to be at my fingertips. So right I'm there. not kind of like digging and trying to find something. So I love this. It's not the most inexpensive thing. I bought this years ago. Yeah. I cannot remember how much I paid. I want to say it's like 50 bucks. It means it's like, last. but it is a, a hefty, yeah. stable. These guys move. You can change them around, which I love. And the labels, do those? These guys? Yeah. Are those part of it? No, I just made these with my label maker. Oh. They do have a little, just like a, a regular file. Yeah. You can, but I found... I don't like reading it sideways mm -hmm. and I don't like making the word go down vertically. So I made my own because again, with anything out there, we need to make it ours. Yes. So it allowed me to be flexible with that, where I could make it with my own label maker. Um, I even have my movie list. My favorite movies are in here. Cause I'm always forgetting what are movies. I cannot think of anything off the top of my head. So I just put my, my kind of, it's almost like a, a top tools of my personal owner's manual go in here so that I can easily get to them. Oh, I love that. So I just wanted to share that. Um, and then another, and I, I just know they're called uh, stacking trays, stacking file trays. Um, but I've had these for so long. I don't remember. 
but I'm sure if you search on Amazon for clear stacking file oh, yeah. trays, it'll come up. So look at these guys. There's probably 20 files right here. Um, it's kind of the, the, the mirrors between stacking things on your desk, but also being able to remember what's underneath yeah. once you stack, because they have little tabs here that you can label with what's underneath. Oh, that's amazing. And then you can just lift it up to get to the tool that you're trying to get to based on the label. So they're all, it's like, a, it's allowing you to stack while also seeing what's in the stack. So I love when organizational tools literally mimic what I need and where I'm struggling. And somebody took the time to design something that literally aligns with what I need to do. So just wanted to highlight that to you. Oh my goodness. You can just put it down there on the floor. I just wanted to. Okay. And then of course, my next favorite thing, my last favorite thing, simple, easy. Um, it's just a clear bin. If I have the choice between a solid bin that I can't see through mm -hmm. and a clear bin, I'm taking the clear mm -hmm. bin every day of the week. What I want, you know, to kind of like caution is, and I, and I used to be a professional organizer. So this, you know, was something I learned through, you know, thinking through that process with clients was if you get clear bins and you stack them on top of each other, how likely is it that you're going to go and take the, the things on top yeah. to get to the bottom? Or are you just going to start shoving? So sometimes the drawers that are clear yeah. can be helpful. So, or like with the, what I was talking about, the alpha shelves, I have like a whole system of shelves that are alpha in my basement that I have aligned so that each bin fits where there's no wasted space. And it's fine because I can see into it. So I can label it and I can see what's in there. So you know exactly what's in there. So I don't have to worry about if I stack it on top, I'm not going to take the top one off to open up the bottom too much resistance. So pay attention that may, for a lot of people, that's not an issue. It's like, yeah, I don't mind. I'll take the, I have people that like organize their shoes that way you can get clear shoe boxes oh, and they'll, sure. and they'll just stack them in their closet and they don't mind because it's, they're kind of light. So they don't mind yeah. going, I would never do it. I need to see them. Well, you can see them, but if you have to take them off, off. to get to the one below, yeah. if that creates resistance, notice and, and acknowledge it and lean into what you know that you need to keep up with the system. Cause it's one thing to create the system. It's a completely separate thing to keep up with the maintenance of it. So clear bins, fabulous, but just think about label everything yeah. so that you can, you know, even if you can see it, it still might be like, okay, now what was in those folders? What's in those folders? <laughs> so I always say, support your future self. Just have a label on there. You'll be so happy when you come back. You're like, oh gosh, thank goodness I took a minute. Labels Sometimes I won't even make like a nice like label maker. I'll just slap a little post-it note on there. Yeah. Because something is better than nothing in the moment. And if I don't label it, I'm always like, why didn't I just take a second to label it? And then Becca, I realized as soon as I said my last example, I have my, I have one more example I can share, yeah. which is my bookcase that was inspired because I was a kindergarten and first grade teacher. Um, and I just loved the way all of the books are on display for younger yeah. kids to see the cover so they can come and, and grab it. It's like literally want. like pulling them in. And I was like, I need that for adults. I no need that. Kidding. I love to read, but I forget what books I have. If they end up in a stack, I'm like, you At first, I don't want to turn my head and have to read it. Or yeah. even if it's on a bookshelf, I don't want to turn my head and have to read right. the cross. I want to see them. So I, so I showed my husband a picture of like a traditional yes. bookcase that you'd find in a younger, you know, elementary school classroom. Can you make it a little bit bigger for me so that I can use it in my office? And love it. So again, it's visible. It's flexible. I can move things around. Yeah. It's easy to access. I can grab really easily. Um, so again, think about the three rules of ADHD friendly organizing, flexibility, visibility, accessibility. Whenever you are looking for a solution to an area that you just like to kind of up your game a little bit, make it work better for you. So that was fun. That was right. I'm, glad. Fun. I'm glad that, that I feel like I was able to show enough things. Again, if you're listening, ADHD friendly on YouTube is where you can see all of the, the fun little things that I've shared. And I know I'll revisit this because it's absolutely one of my favorite, favorite things to talk about because everything I do is so mindful of keeping things in sight mm -hmm. in a way that isn't overwhelming because everything does need to be in sight for me. And so how do I do that without it just being everywhere? <laughs> so, um, it's, it's a real thing. Okay. So Becca, you don't know this. You picked my quote for today. <laughs> I picked it for a reason. So this is Becca's quote. And again, this is from um, Excellent Advice for Living from Kevin Kelly, where we're looking for fun, inspiring quotes to share at the end of each episode. And today's quote Becca picked, and it is, always be quick to give credit and to take blame. 
And I picked that Becca because I want to give you absolute props and credit for catching the technical challenge before, like well in advance of it happening. So I have a live, um, I do a first Friday webinar every month for my membership community on a new ADHD friendly topic mm -hmm. each month. And this is the first one that I'm doing. So now you know what day I'm recording this because it's Friday and it's the first Friday <laughs> and I'm recording this. Um, so it's January 5th, 5th when I'm recording this. Yes. And before we recorded this, Becca said, you know, I'm just going to take a minute and just confirm that the Zoom links work because we had a little problem with them last month yes. and have never had a problem before. So I don't know what caused it. And she tested them after I created the links and we made the reminders mm -hmm. and everything and tested before the the holiday break and everything worked great. And I, even in my head, I was like, well, I don't know, I was just testing that, but okay. Because I was like, we already tested it. But I was, and I was like, I knew I need to get this podcast recorded because I'm still trying to get a little bit of a buffer yeah. after the holidays to, to not, you know, kind of have that pressure. Like I like to be like a week ahead so yeah. that I've got a little bit of space in case somebody gets sick or oh, weather we're, we're in Chicago, you know, if there's like a storm and we can't get the editing, everything done. So she came to me like 10 minutes later. She's like, Patty, seeing the computer, <laughs> it's saying that the link doesn't work. And I'm like, that's not possible. <laughs> and of course, when I tried to use mine, Zoom was like, oh, we're going to install a new update. And then it took like five or 10 minutes. It felt yeah. like forever. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm like sweating. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Cause I get very stressed about <laughs> yes. this. And all I'm thinking is this looks so unprofessional. This is horrific. How can this happen? People that don't know me yet are going to think, who is this, this sketchy girl that doesn't even have a link that works. No, I know, but this is I know. where my head goes. And so I had to breathe and come back. So I have to give credit that you you trusted your little nudge because My last mistake. month was pretty uncomfortable because last month I found out literally like 10 minutes before, before the session and we were scrambling to send out um a new the, a new it, the link and the yeah. it was just so I I want to actually it's a celebration too. I have structure in place now. I had my web designer add an announcements, which I'm sh I'm sharing today. They don't know it's there yet, so they won't know to go look. But there's an announcements tab now yeah. in the membership platform, so people can see it. But so I want to acknowledge that you found it and yeah. you caught it and took action, and and also to admit like even like that little like hesitation for me to kind of question the that was on me that I was like a little like even though you didn't know necessarily, yeah. I was just like all right all right, I don't know why, like, let's just do the podcast. So I want to acknowledge that I was even maybe a little judgmental about the, the necessary step that you took. And I want to really thank you for, oh, for just going ahead and trusting your intuition and, and testing it because it gave us the time to troubleshoot it. In a it was still very uncomfortable because I don't mm -hmm. like how it looks that I'm like, hey, then send out yeah. an email to everybody and let them know there's a new link. I just don't think that's, you know, it is what it is, yeah. but I don't like it, no, I know. but it was certainly easier than it would have been if we were doing it 15 yes. minutes before. Cause we, we, I, and then I would have gotten into that session completely overwhelmed and not showing up the way I want to show up. And it takes me hours to plan for this. So yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. you did so, it. yeah. So there, that was the, when she got, she said that quote and I said, yes, pick that one. <laughs> she was reading them to me as I was grabbing all of my little props to share with you today. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that's it for this episode 117. If there's anything that you've used to help you organize that keeps those three tenets of ADHD friendly organizing in mind, which are visibility, flexibility, and accessibility, please share it. We'd love to have examples from others. If you have a question about organizing post, I, I'm Let's really know. more and more going to be bringing in questions because I'm getting more questions and I'm realizing I could just post the answer in the comments, but I could also bring it here and, yeah, and answer them because sometimes like I had a question this week from the first episode. So I was like, okay, okay. So I'm just going to, you know, kind of create some structure yeah. and, and bring those in more and more. So if you have a question, post it in this episode, 117. Let us know. And as always, I invite you take what works for you, leave the rest behind. This is all about noticing what aligns with you. What do you feel a connection to when you hear it? Because if you lean into the way your brain works, you are setting yourself up to thrive with ADHD and instead of struggling to make things work because that's the way that everybody else does it. Yeah. Do it your way, capture it in your personal owner's manual and come back next week and learn some more as we explore more ways to close that gap between struggling and thriving. Until next time, tally ho.